and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome to Outdoors People, with me, C.W. Getz, and her, Maya Marzaki. Good evening. It's Wednesday, June 7th, 2023. We've got a beautiful, comfortable 77-degree Fahrenheit day here in north central illinois that equates to a 25 degree celsius for everyone else in the world like i think they're really, <laughs> still the only ones doing fahrenheit am i right i think in canada <laughs> can no, they, i think they do celsius no yeah, they, they don't they do oh my god i think they do i think i supposed to know right well they used to and i know that yeah <laughs> i think uh i think our canadian friends said yeah we've changed so yeah yeah hey i want to tell everyone and you are in the studio with me tonight here near chicago uh for the first time we, this is the first time we've done a broadcast with you now we did one with you as a guest but not yeah. with you as a co-host and in brazil not in your studio so Absolutely. that's amazing we, yeah we broadcasted in two different countries now together so <laughs> that's good but uh, yeah first time you're here how do you like illinois by the way so far <laughs> It is. Uh, we are having so much fun, right? Yeah. But it is a really quiet and peaceful place. It is. It is. <laughs> uh, until the airplanes and the Harley Davidson. I'm just saying, <laughs> and the farm equipment go by. But uh, yeah, and you know, we were in Duluth, Minnesota, uh, last week at this yeah. time doing a broadcast up there with Tom Sega of uh, Duluth Pack. Had a great time. Those guys uh, really showed us some wonderful hospitality. Got a tour yeah. through the factory and, and uh, the distribution center and the store, actually their flagship store. So <laughs> it, it was a lot of fun. And then actually the other cool thing is um, legend Cliff Jacobson and his wife Susie were gracious enough to invite us to dinner and uh, put us up there in uh, River Falls, uh, uh, Wisconsin. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. Um, you guys. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I couldn't ask for a better trip. Everything was just so nice in the loof with Cliff. Everything was just so nice, and, and I love it to meet her, meet him. Sorry, meet him. Yeah, and so nice. Th were those were that he made us some margaritas, homemade, <laughs> and I mean from scratch, and it was yeah. the best that I've ever had. So yeah, kudos to you, Cliff. <laughs> you're 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 uh, a bar amazing bar as amazing of a bartender as you are an outdoor. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <absolutely. laughs> that's true. Yeah, very much so. Well, tonight's episode of Outdoors People is brought to you by Rutabaga Paddle Sports, providing time on the water. By Campground Views, making camping easier. By Duluth Pack, made in the USA since 1882. And by Jackson Kayak, pursuing joy through paddle sports. Tonight's episode is wing foil and IQ foil in Italy with our special guest, Alessandro Tomasi. Uh, and we're going to do something. I'm just going to tell you right off the bat. We're going to do something <laughs> interesting here because I, yours truly, suck at these uh, names of the cities. So I'm going to pause and, and Maya is going to tell you the names of the cities. So it should be really, it'll be a lot of fun. I've never done this before. <laughs> Nothing new here. I touch. <laughs> Always something new on this show. <laughs> All right, here we go. Outdoor. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's start over. 20-year-old windsurfer and wing foiler. Alessandro Jose Tomasi lives in Maya. Riva del Garda, Italy. And teaches windsurfing and wing foil at his father's windsurfing school in Guarda Lake, Italy. Influenced by his father, Alessandro has been competing in windsurfing since age nine and has been doing wing foil now for three years and IQ foil for four years. Alessandro's competitive achievements include first place at Wingfoil Racing World Championship 2021 in Campione del Guarda, Italy. Fifth place at U21 IQ Foil European Championship in 2022 in Nago Torboli, Italy. And third place at the last stop of the Wingfoil Racing World Series 2022 in Jerico Aquara, Brazil. Alessandro's next event will be during the third stop of the Wingfoil Racing World Cup in 
Silva Plana, Switzerland. From June 13th to 18th. And with that, welcome to the show, Alessandro. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Good, good. Doing good. How'd, you like, <laughs> how'd you like that creative introduction we did? Because I had to have, I really had to have Baez help for that. I, I, I would have stumbled all over that. Embarrassed myself. <laughs> Any more than I already just did. So, <laughs> what's well, fun? I like it. Yeah, absolutely. How's your, hey, by the way, how's your weather there in, in Italy there where you're at? It's pretty variable. Uh, like right now, it's a bit cloudy, rainy. Then we what's, got your, sunny. what's your temperature? Uh, right now, it might be like around 18, 19, 18 20 degrees Celsius. Oh, we're, sounds yeah, we're like we're a little warmer. warmer than you are then. Yeah, yeah it yeah. is colder. Yeah, I mean, it's mid, right? So oh. during the day we get like, I think, 28 degrees. Oh, wow. Whoa, so, so good night. <laughs> <laughs> Buena noche. <laughs> good stuff. Well, so let's have you describe wind, foil, and UK, sorry, AQ fall for us. Okay, so, well, they are two pretty similar sports, but they are very different as well. Uh, <laughs> well, I'd start from the wing, from the IQ foil, which is the Olympic class for windsurfing. Uh, yeah, uh, it is a windsurf. I don't know if you know what a windsurf is, so it's yeah. like a... Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And you grab the windsurf and you put underneath the board a uh, foil, which is uh, like an airplane attached under the board, which lifts the board. So we go, we always go flying around the lake. The body is almost never touching the water. And I think that's pretty cool. How does that, okay, so you can, can you take that little, wing or whatever you call it underneath the water and can you propel yourself up in the air and make jump is that how you do it is that how that works feels like flying yeah yeah i mean uh <laughs> when the airplane is in the water it lifts you up when you get it out of the water it doesn't have any power anymore because the the air is not right but but you can but that's how you propel yourself up and out of the water with that little yeah. wing and then it, literally you can do jumps yeah. because of that, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's impressive. I watch it. Mm -hmm. So is there you we were talking earlier, there's a difference. One of these you hold the wings, and the other, the wing, uh, the sail, I don't know what you'd call that, the okay. is attached to the board. Is, am I right? Yeah. You can explain that for us, how that works. Yes. Uh, why that is. The IQ. The IQ foil is the one with the sail attached to the board because, as I said before, is a windsurf. And yeah, the difference is that on the wing foil, you have the that wing that would be the sail mm -hmm. that is not attach, attached to the board. You have a pretty much smaller board because you don't have any, you don't need to have the space to attach the, the sail to the board. Yeah. Um, now, do you, are yeah, your that's... feet are your feet attached to that somehow the board? I mean, obviously they are, so you don't get lifted right off the thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can also go without straps, actually. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you most of the times you use the foot straps, which are just where you put in your feet, and they're not really stuck there. You can get them off. Because you change no. side also. And you one right is more. Front the front. Oh, sorry. And one is easier than another one? How it works? It's really hard to say, actually. Uh... <laughs> For you, it's not hard. Yeah. Above yeah. then, it is easy, right? For the rest of the people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> For, yeah. But for a regular people, there is a easier one? I would say that for a complete beginner, uh, get going would be easier on the on the wing for it. Okay, yeah. good to know. And uh, how did you first became interested in each of these unique sports? Well, 
uh, as you know, my dad owns a windsurfing school. So since I was really young, uh, I always saw my dad riding it. And yeah. I, you had no choice. <laughs> you can say that, yeah. <laughs> did he say, but, you have to learn this? Or did you, you just like, I want to do this. I want to do this. I think both. <laughs> yeah. He wanted me to to learn, but I wasn't. I was into doing it. Uh, yeah. I also had a older sister, two years older. So I would say, like when she was six year old, she six years old. She was already going on the windsurf, oh, and wow. at that age, I was four. Yeah. So I remember. Uh, my parents said that I was really jealous of her. So, <laughs> was she really I, good? And she uh, was like, no, nah, she she just enjoys going. She didn't really compete as me. Yeah. Oh, okay. See. Mm. See, Dublin and I have a joke, and it is like you are going to do, and you are going to like it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you will. So, do, you will do this and like it. Yeah. <laughs> like it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's. <laughs> kind of what happened with you <laughs> but at least you really like though so that's good <laughs> so let me ask you is is um wing foil and iq foil popular throughout the world or basically or is it only in certain countries that, that people do this yeah it is because you need the conditions to do it you need uh you can do it on a, you need water, a lake, sea, or anything. And you need pretty much wind, consistent wind. And of course, the better places are where there's always wind. Yeah. Yeah, that's good to know, actually. I I was going to ask you if you just can uh, do that in ocean or you can also do in rivers and lakes. So I guess you, you just told us right so you can do in all those places you need have water that's all <laughs> yeah yeah that's right you can do you can do it everywhere we race also everywhere on the lake on the sea with different conditions more wavy and that's you really enjoy to have different conditions and to ride in different places yeah that's nice interesting uh well we are going to a little break don't go away we'll be back with more of outdoors people right after these messages a few years ago someone asked rutabaga's owner darren bush hey how long have you guys been selling boats darren replied well, we don't sell boats we sell time on the water of course, that comes in all types. We help people paddle more safely with Rutabaga Outdoor programs. We rent canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddleboards. We sell and install racks to get you from home to adventure. Rutabaga's got everything you need to get you out on the water, like paddles, life jackets, dry bags, and clothing. Rutabaga Paddle Sports, on the web at rutabaga.com. Mention you saw this ad on The Camping Show. It is time to go camping. Introducing Campground View's Virtual Tours. You can tour the campground, see the sites, see if they are available, and click to book your perfect spot. Hit the open road and explore the amazing places found in nature. We make it easy to discover, find, and book your site so that you can go have the fun and freedom you seek. Campground View's virtual tours make it easy and simple for you to see where you are going. Duluth Pack is handcrafted for every lifestyle, making memories since 1882. In store at 365 Canal Park Drive or online at DuluthPack.com. We're one big family. 
a community of paddlers, and we want to make sure that everyone has a great time out on the water. We are made right here in Sparta, Tennessee, USA. This is where every Jackson kayak is born, built by hand with a focus on innovation. We are Jackson Kayak. We are. We are. We are Jackson Kayak. We are. We are. We're Jackson Kayak. We are. We are Jackson Kayak. And we're back with our guest, Alessandro Tomasi, here on Outdoors People. Uh, Alessandro, let me ask you a question. We're going to talk about com- competing competitions for a little bit. Mm. Um, first of all, uh, do you compete in both wing foil and IQ foil? And there was something else we were talking about earlier, too, is uh, uh, wind foil and wing foil um, as opposed to IQ foil. So we're going to have you talk about that a little bit. But I wanted, I do want to know. Do you compete in both of these? And if you do, where are those competitions held? Yeah, I do compete in both in both uh, sports. Yeah. And well, we have competitions all over the world. We to organize a competition, you they just need a place where you have to be pretty sure that you're going to get some win. And yeah on the water of course uh because like what it, places where, where have you competed at like what what countries have you competed in um uh, i have competed in um uh, in greece in spain italy of course wow. in uh brazil. brazil wow uh never in the united states we, i don't even know i don't remember seeing people do this here no. in the u.s and maybe and i'm not you know, I'm not as worldly as I'd like to be, but uh, I don't remember seeing people do this here. So that that that's why this sort of caught my attention. Uh, you know, for doing an episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a huge, uh, it's a huge country, United States, but there's not many people doing it. Yeah, I don't know. Neither in competitions, you you don't get to see many USA people. Yeah, maybe the beaches and the wing wind, they are not that good. And like in Brazil, Italy, because I know up north in Brazil, that's a rude thing. Everyone does. I have many friends that just move it to the up north just to, mm-hmm. to wing foil or do stuff like that. It's so cool. Yeah. That, yeah, that's awesome. I, I've never seen anybody do this in person, and I, I'd like to. I think we should go to Italy. <laughs> 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 in fact, we talked about that. Yeah. Um, hey, if we came to Italy, Alessandro, you teach us how to do it because since you've got a school there, yeah, uh, your dad does. Uh, we, I think we could. Uh, you think we could get a couple of lessons or what? Whoa. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Like that <laughs> yeah, it's some of that awesome Italian food that we, uh, Maya and I, both yeah. love too. So. Oh yeah, and wine. <laughs> <laughs> how long did it take you to get? to where the point where you were um, really comfortable with competing. You're like, you know what, I'm going to do it. Uh, how long did that take you when you sort of first started? Wait, uh, repeat again. Like, so so once you started, you know, once you started windsurfing and, and uh, doing wing foil, wind foil, um, how many years were you doing that before you said, hey, I'm ready to compete? Well, uh I don't know. I think I started about five years old, Ooh, yeah. and then uh, I started competing at nine Whoa. because a friend of my dad, which had a, a son doing it, competing, said to my dad, "Just make him compete as well." And then we tried, and it went pretty well at the Italian yeah. Championship. Uh, I won it, and. You you won that your first year you competed, or is that what you're saying? Yeah, in my age. Oh wow! Yes. Yeah, but wow. Still, that's you're like a natural. Yeah, that's crazy. Nine years old, I was learning how to walk. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy, man! Congratulations. That's good, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And is there an Olympic event for wing foil and IUQ foil? Uh, so IQ foil, yes. As I said before, it's IQ foil will be the Olympic class of wing foil with a D, which is the sport. 
And the other sport, which is wing foil with a G, doesn't doesn't have any Olympic event because probably because it's really young as a sport. I would say it's like three, three and a half years old. So, oh wow! So that's yeah. really new. Yeah. 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 Wow. So yeah, wind file. There is a Olympic event, but wing file, no. There exactly. is no. Okay. Yeah, that's good to know, actually. And have you ever been injured while doing either? Uh, wind foiling. So with the IQ foil, not really. Maybe. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say injured because. Maybe crashing and then walking a little bit bad for... <laughs> but not hospitalized. Yeah, not in a hospital or anything like that. Yeah, But I've never been in the hospital. But my worst have been on the on the wing fall when, like, after one month, after I learned wing falling, I started to already doing jumps and tricks. I was really into it. I was enjoying so much uh, doing 360s and this stuff. But then probably I was doing them with a pretty bad technique because it was I was very new in the sport. And I, um, how do you say when your shoulder gets out? I dislocated oh, it, my shoulder. Dislocated your shoulder? Yeah. Oh my gosh, oh. wow. So are we, talking, are we talking like somersaults, like you're doing flips up in the air upside down? Is that what you were doing? I wasn't doing that. Okay. <laughs> that's what I'm that. picturing. Because <laughs> I'm not a freestyler. I'm a racer. I'm a... Okay. Oh. Yeah. I do speed racing. But there's also on the wing foil uh, the, the freestyling part. And I do crazy tricks. Really? Really? Now, is that something you'll ever do, you think? Freestyle? Maybe once I get my shoulder better. Because, uh -oh. like after the first time you dislocate it it's always easier to get it out and get it in and it's oh, pretty really? annoying oh yeah. so that's something you're prone to now is that happening again huh? mm, yeah oh, wow yes it's true you need to work out lots and take care of your yeah. shoulder right hey, let me ask you what what's the worst what's the worst wipeout that you've ever seen anybody do uh doing wing foil or wind foil for that matter hmm I mean, anybody, okay. I mean, can he send you to the hospital? I mean, can you get injured that badly enough on, you know, doing this that you might have to go to the uh, emergency room or what? Very rare. I would say, rare. Uh, very rare. So it's a pretty safe sport then. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah, it's pretty safe, yeah. <laughs> All right, people who were scared out there, you don't have to be scared anymore. We just, <laughs> we just eliminated yeah. the... Uh, emergency room <laughs> visits i think yeah i saw some vid videos and pictures and it did not like that save for me but i'm <laughs> glad it is safe for you but talking about that we have some pictures and videos to look up but after this little break so don't go away mm -hmm. we'll be back with more of outdoors people right after these messages A few years ago, someone asked Rutabaga's owner, Darren Bush, Hey, how long have you guys been selling boats? Darren replied, well, We don't sell boats. We sell time on the water. Of course, that comes in all types. We help people paddle more safely with Rutabaga outdoor programs. We rent canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddle boards. We sell and install racks to get you from home to adventure. Rutabaga's got everything you need to get you out on the water, like paddles, life jackets, dry bags, and clothing. Rutabaga Paddle Sports, on the web at rutabaga.com. Mention you saw this ad on The Camping Show. It is time to go camping. Introducing Campground View's virtual tours. You can tour the campground, see the sites, see if they are available, and click to book your perfect spot. Hit the open road and explore the amazing places found in nature. We make it easy to discover, find, and book your site so that you can go have the fun and freedom you seek. Campground View's virtual tours make it easy and simple for you to see where you are going.
Duluth Pack is handcrafted for every lifestyle. Making memories since 1882. In store at 365 Canal Park Drive or online at DuluthPack.com. big family, a community of paddlers, and we want to make sure that everyone has a great time out on the water. We are made right here in Sparta, Tennessee, USA. This is where every Jackson kayak is born, built by hand with a focus on innovation. We are Jackson Kayak. We are. We are. We are Jackson Kayak. We are. We are. We're Jackson Kayak. We are. We are Jackson Kayak. And we're back on the uh, Outdoors People here with uh, Alessandro Tomasi, our guest. Um, why don't we get some, as Maya mentioned, some photos and some video, and a video, I should say, that uh, Alessandro sent us. Let's take a look at the photos first, if we can. There we go. There we go. Alessandro, what are we looking at here? We're looking at the IQ foil. And, oh, okay. Yeah. And this is where it's attached to the board, correct? Yeah. Yeah, this is the one that's attached. How tall? How tall is that? It, would you call it a sail? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. How it, how tall is that? Um, it's like, I know you're going to give us meters, but uh, that's okay. Yeah, I'm going to say <laughs> uh, five meters and a half. Whoa! About. Yeah, that's that's five pretty, meters. That's pretty tall. <laughs> Whoa! It is it's, heavy. Uh, I don't know how much it's the weight of the sail, but it's that that high because it's the Olympic class, which uh, we're using just one equipment for all winds, and uh, so you need a pretty big sail to use it also in light wind, so to be able to compete also in light wind, and so we have a big one, yeah. And did you say did you say five and a half meters or five meters? Uh, the mast is the which is the thing that goes in, mm -hmm. in the set to make it rigid. It's uh, five fifty five centimeters. Five, so five and a half, five and a half meters. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me ask you this: What is that pole? Is that uh, like a carbon fiber? Yeah. I was just going to say that's probably carbon fiber, very light. Yeah. Who just messaged us five meters means 18 feet mm -hmm. for you guys in five, America. Five and a half, I think, is. Yeah, eight, five yeah, and a half. 18. That's a that's a that's a tall. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Get mm -hmm. some serious wind. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. So you, you got a bar to hold on. I was wondering how where your hands actually go. So interesting. Yeah, you've got mm -hmm. kind of a bar that goes all around the sail. Yeah. And yeah, you're also you're also attached to the sail with a harness. Uh, oh which helps you because like you get tired so easy if you go just with your arms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would think so. It's almost yeah. impossible. Now you can see through that sail too. There, it looks like it's just clear yeah. plastic, right? Yeah. 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 And you have one feet on, and another one, sorry, foot on, and another one out. Yeah. So it's just it like to the, move. It depends on the direction you're going, uh, compared to the wind, you know. Mm. So you In lean on that thing like a sailboat almost. This one. You lean on that like a you lean that thing like a sailboat almost. The same way you would lean a sailboat, you're leaning that board there. Yeah. Yeah. Similar. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, in that in that picture, they're both in the in Garda Lake, and uh, I was going downwind, and this is how you go downwind with one foot. Now, when you're uh, racing, do you have to tack like they call it tacking in in sailing? Same way. Yeah. Yeah. You call yeah. it tacking, tacking and jibing. And that's some work. Yeah. <laughs> and is the place you you live like in this picture? Yeah. It is the right in the place you live. That's amazing. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, we have a huge mountain. Oh, even better. 
It's a cool picture there. See, I like how that board comes right out of the water. I mean, that's just cool. I, I don't know how, you know, I've never seen these operate in person, but I'm, I'm thinking that just, I've, of course, videos. But it's just amazing. Who came up with that? Yeah, it's a really good feeling. The first yeah. time you try, I don't know, it's... That's got to feel pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's do the net. There we go. <laughs> yep. All right. Now we got twins. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like from it. Swiss, Switzerland, not run for Italy, right? <laughs> I saw the flag. Yeah. Yeah. The other one is, is Denmark. 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 Yeah. Interesting. It's has almost the same uh, flag as Switzerland. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> the same, actually. There we go. Okay, Whoa. so now, th okay, which one is this? Is this the wind? Wait a minute. Am I going to get this right? Wind or wing? Huh? Wing foil <laughs> with a G? Yeah, with a G. This, this is wing foil with a G. Okay. Yeah. Wing. Exactly. Now, you, you have nothing to hold on to other than this wing. Isn't that, that's got to be more difficult for balance, right? Uh, Not really. Uh. I would say that this is easier for a beginner. This is easier? Yeah. Wow. Actually, yeah. It looks like it would be really difficult. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. You got nothing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. That that had mm -hmm. to be harder to learn. I would just think it, you know. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. gotta be and the and this board is smaller, right? The board? Yeah. Yeah, it is. How uh -huh. long is that board? Or how short is that board, I should say? It is about uh, one meter fifty. One and a half meters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. Five or six feet. Yeah. Okay, that is short. And yeah, this picture is in that picture was in uh, in Brazil in Taiba. <laughs> it was in Brazil. <laughs> oh wow! Cool. This looks cool. Yeah, this looks awesome. I like that. So that's your that's this is the wing foil, and when you're getting some serious wind in it, that's cool. Yeah, there was strong wind in this picture. That's got to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing kind of speed runs this, that day, and I did 61.8 kilometers per hour. I was just going to ask you that. Yeah. yeah. How, fast, <laughs> how fast is that again? It's 60, 61 kilometers per hour. 62. 61. Yeah. Wow. You're, you're moving. Kilometer. That's moving. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, like yeah, that's for for being on water. It's a fast speed. Yeah, I would say that's why you're wearing the helmet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Be safe. It's... Oh, sorry. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> just how high that goes out of the water. Whoa. Yeah. It's interesting because the board is just there to stand on. It's not really in contact <laughs> with the water at all. It's not, you know. Yeah. And uh, where is the place you are in the picture? In this one, this was in uh, in Garda. That was Garda. a competition. I was pushing hard. <laughs> Interesting. I was really focused, as you see. Riva, Go Riva del Garda, right? Where you live. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay, this looks airborne. I mean, am I am I wrong? Huh? This is airborne. You're in the air. Yeah. There's no water there. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what I was talking about. This thing that just this little blade or whatever wings that just propels you out of the water. And you're basically flying, right? Oh, well, almost over the over who made the picture. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. So beautiful. You're really leaning that boat. Not, it's not a boat. It's a board, I guess. You're not leaving the board. <laughs> yeah. You're leaving the board. Wow. And that's, that's the IQ foil again. IQ foil. Okay. IQ yeah. foil. What do we got here? There we go. Now, this is the wing wing foil yeah. again. Right? Yeah. This was in France. I like in that. Competition. All right. Such a beautiful picture. Coming up on the last photo. Is this the last one? We got one more. 
this looks like it. Um, okay, so we've got a video. Let's do the video now, and this is pretty cool. Um, we uh, we'll get to watch you in action. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look at that. Man, you are really moving <laughs> on the water on those boards. I'm watching you go, wow. That's impressive. Yeah. Really, congratulations. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, let me ask you this, Alessandro. What, uh, what, how are wing foil uh, and IQ foil different from kite surfing? Because they both use wind to do what they're doing. So, how I mean, how, I guess, how, how different is that to get used to from one to the other? Because you do all of them, right? Yeah. Uh, so, um, I mean, there's a lot of similarities between them, I'm sure, but there are some differences, right? Yeah, there are. Yeah. They're pretty different. Uh, IQ foil, which is a wind foil, is has a sail like a sailboat. Okay. And the kite surf has used to move in. A uh, kite with the lines and a really small board. Yeah, they have so, huge kites, so really much power, and so they can use a super small board and still glide on water. So the one that might be closest to it would be uh, wing foil, like kite surfing, right? To kite surfing? Yeah. Yeah. I would yeah. say that wing foil is kind of a hybrid between the two sports, between the wing, wing foil yeah. and uh, and kite surfing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I mean, if you had, if you were being towed by a rope, uh, wing foil, wing foil would be the one that you would be closest to uh, kite surfing, right? Yeah, yeah. Looks like it. Looks like it. So. You know, I know we touched on this a second ago, but let's have you. I'm going to ask you officially here. What so the dimensions of each of these boards, uh, IQ foil and wing foil? Uh, you said the IQ foil is about no, though, no, wing foil is about one and a half meters. And what how about the IQ foil? How big is that board? Do you say was that six foot or well, six uh, foot, two and a half meters, two meters? It's yeah, about two two meters twenty. Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's a pretty good size. I mean, and honestly, those are smaller than our SUPs. You know, well, stand yeah, much, much smaller. The better boards are really long. Yeah, absolutely. It is pretty much a body board surfing, uh, board, right? So small. <laughs> how do you how do you stand up when you get on these things? How do you stand up? You get out there. I mean, you don't just take off from the beach, uh, you know, surfing, I mean, or windsurfing or anything, like even windsurfing, but IQ foil and uh, wing foil, you don't just take off. How do you get it? How do you get there? Mm. You have boats pull you out there? Huh? You have a boat pull you out there and get to get started or how does that work? No, you don't need the boat. Uh, really? You just go in the water, maybe swim a little bit farther from the coast because for the foil, for that airplane, you need a little bit of uh, deep water yep. mm -hmm. and then from there on the IQ foil is pretty easy because the board is 
big. Yeah. And so pretty easy to stand and you lift the sail. And when you have your sail on in your hands, you just gain speed and take off. And the windfall is a little bit more complicated when you're in a good level because you use a pretty small board that sinks. Also. Yeah, right. Is it really? It sinks? Huh? That little yeah. board? Oh, my gosh. How just you push it that? under your feet. You put your foot in the straps. You grab uh -huh. the, the wing. And when you catch a little bit of speed, then the board comes out exactly. of, of the water. Yeah. And then you, you can get even more speed and take off. So getting started is a little bit of a challenge with a, uh, a wing foil. Yeah. Can be. Can be. The first times, yeah. And yeah. maybe you switch equipment with someone else, equipment that you're not used to, and it could be a little bit <laughs> Interesting. Hard. Anna, what is the most difficult part of learning how to do swing foil and IUQ foil? Okay, so the most difficult part in wing foil I mean, it's everything really complicated in both sports because <laughs> you need to get used to how to use your sail or wing uh, in the different wind conditions or angles to the wind. And yeah, but maybe the hardest part is when you start getting on the foil, so taking off. And yeah it's pretty unstable for the first times when you're not used to it I and imagine. i would say that the hardest part is for the iq foil the the same so getting on the foil but i was saying that the iq foil is maybe a little bit harder than the wing foil because uh well, you got a giant sail for one thing. You got to keep straight <laughs> yeah. up and you can't lay it down. <laughs> that would be tough. Yeah. And it's pretty hard to move it. It's much heavier than the than the other one. Yeah, I can imagine. That. So seems like you need to have balance, strongness, and also know what you are doing about the direction of the wind and uh, how, how to balance that. So you need to know a little bit of physics right <laughs> as well oh, yeah. so you need to be smart and be in a good shape and have a good balance right uh yeah the first thing you need to you need to figure out is how to how the wind works where where does it come from and where is your board point pointing uh to the wind and yeah that's a the first thing you have to understand that it's pretty hard to understand. Maybe it's not that you need to be clever, but <laughs> but but the wind thing really have, huh? is a big. But the wind really is a big deal. You better oh. know where that's coming from, or how to work. Oh yeah. I think it seems to me like once you get up on that uh, each of those boards, and you get the wind propelling you a little bit, and you're up. I'm thinking that's that's probably the hardest part just to get up. Am I right? Once you're up, it's good, right? For the first time, you think? Well, I'm just saying. I mean, I think that would be the toughest part is to get some get going. You know, just get stand up and get some wind behind you and get moving. And once you move, I think is it. I mean, that's probably the easier part than yeah. just to get up. Yeah, it feels like surfing. The hardest part part is stand up. Right. right. Yeah. 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 I've experienced that too. <laughs> Would you agree with that, Alessandro? Uh, no, because I, I think that the as in, on surfing the 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 hardest part is when you take off when you stand up on the board. But here it's not like when you stand up on the board, but when the when you're really wing foiling or IQ foiling, which is when the board gets out of the water. Mm. Oh, because it got pretty unstable. Oh, yeah, that's true. There's only two little blades down there. There's not a big yeah. surface of the board. <laughs> that, yeah, I guess that's true. Gosh, yeah, I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to try this sometime, Maya. <laughs> you know, Alessandro's waiting for us over there in Italy. He's probably got a, a hotel room waiting for us here <laughs> next week, and we'll uh, 
go check it out. Mm. Hey, we're here. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. I like that, I like that plan. Yeah, but, you know, Italy should be amazing. I have never been there. But Jerico Aquário in Brazil, oh my gosh, is like beautiful. We need we need to do that neither in Italy and in Brazil. I'm with you. <laughs> I sign me up, man. Sign me up. <laughs> Absolutely. And by the I way, mean, how and by the way, how did you like Brazil? It... Jerico Aquara was an amazing place. It's so beautiful. Like all the town is on the, I would say it's like being on the beach all the time because there's just sand on the roads. And yeah, I loved it. I'll be there also this year in uh, December, I think. Oh, that's cool. Yes, yeah. that's cool. And uh, where can people go to follow you on social media? Uh, my main social media is Instagram and it's... Uh, a L E underscore underscore T O M A S I. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Alessandro, yeah. we'd like to thank you for being our guest here on Outdoors People. It was absolutely a pleasure having you with us uh, all the way there from Italy. And I know it's late there. So we're going to thank you for <laughs> staying up with us this late to be uh, on the show. I go yeah. to sleep straight away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. And uh, we'd also like to thank each of our sponsors for bringing you tonight's show. Ruda Bega Pedal Sports, Campground Views, Daluf Pack, and Jackson Kayak. Be sure to tune in for next week's episode, Staying Grounded, with our special guest, Stephanie Quarles. Until then, for Maya Marzaki, this is C.W. Getz saying thanks for tuning in to Outdoors People. See you next week. Ciao.